from Beesdale. The train now follows the west coast round to Malig. It's a spectacular route, constantly changing, from rocky seashore to white sandy beaches, from woodland to small areas of croftland and peat bog. It's a haven for both land and marine life. The area's actually got one of the highest density of otters in the UK mainland, and the sound of Arasig, which is the name given to the sea around here, is internationally important for marine conservation. An astonishing assortment of marine plants and animals live on the seabed, including extensive banks of marl, an unusual limestone-encrusted seaweed. Ian Strawn, who we spoke to earlier, has spent time working in this area too. What's special about Loch Arbor is that the coast runs up into natural woodlands rather than in so many other places there's development right up to the coast. So this enables um, a, a lot of wildlife to live there that uses the coast and the inland. One example of that is the otter and Loch Arbor has a tremendous population of otters. They use the sea um, for f feeding. They feed in the kelp beds and the other seaweed beds on the shore and they come onto the shore to rest and for breeding. They particularly need fresh water to keep their fur clean and they use small pools particularly along the shore to wash their fur. They live in small areas called holts. These are often holes under rocks and the coastline is particularly good for them because there are lots of holes and crevices that they can go into to rest and to use for breeding. Tell me something about the sound of Arasig. The sound of Arasig, which includes the Loch Nanua, which you can see, and uh, Loch Islet too, is a, called a special area of conservation. It's an internationally important area for its marine life. And a particular feature of the, the area are what's called merl beds. Merl is a kind of seaweed and that has um, limestone encrusted around it. And it actually occurs on the seabed. It's not attached to the rock like most seaweeds are, but its weight, own weight keeps it down on the seabed. And there are some very large areas of this uh, merl. It needs clean water with good water flow, and the sea lochs around Loch Arbor are particularly good for it. But what's also so special about it is that there are lots of small animals can live in amongst it and it's very important for um, a lot of fish species that the, the young stages of the fish can shelter in amongst the, the knobbly growths of this seaweed and get protection from larger fish. The coastline is a very damp sort of place, boggy and wet and this is ideal breeding grounds for a lot of insects and especially the infamous midge which um, we have some of the best places for in Britain, I would say, um, or the worst is probably a better way to put it. Um, these tiny little insects um, have a, a bite far beyond their size. And um, although the bites don't usually last for very long, the numbers of midges uh, tend to be so amazing that um, they drive people wild. Colocodius impunctatus. Why? What is the point? I mean, it, it, ecologically speaking, where, what's its purpose? The larvae actually live in wet soil, often in areas with a lot of rushes, um, and they actually feed on the, the roots and the dead vegetation in the soil. So they, they serve a purpose in the ecological, overall ecological system. Um, the adults, too, are, are, are very important for many other things that feed on them. Um, think of things like house martins, swallows, and these are all feeding on midges and bats especially, feed on thousands of midges every night. Um, and so midges have a, an important role to play in, in the food web.